This is the third time we have been to Hospital Shalom in the northern part of Guatemala. Since we started, the lab has really come a long way. It started off as an empty room with just wires in the corner, and now we have a full electrical panel. Various vices to do our work and hold it. And a full lab outfitted to make a prosthesis. Our biggest project this time was to outfit the prosthetic lab with an air system for pneumatic tools specific for making a prosthesis. This project is all made possible through donations from Samaritan's Purse and other private companies. There are many steps to making a prosthesis. A mold must be taken of the residual limb. The mold then needs to be skirted. The mold is poured with plaster of Paris. The mold is then rectified or modified to intimately fit the patient. Alignment lines are marked on the cast. We then heat copolymer plastic to a temperature of 375 degrees and move the plastic over to the model and then vacuum form it to make the final prosthesis. The vacuum forming process has to take place very quickly so the plastic does not cool and the vacuum is effective so we have an intimately fitting socket. Once the plastic has reached its set temperature, it is cut off the mold, trimmed, and then ground and buffed out. The last step is componentry selection and final assembly. The reward for all the hard work of making a prosthesis is seeing people take their first step Providing a prosthesis to a patient not only helps them regain their ability to walk again, but it also provides them a sense of being a whole person. Over the course of one week, we fabricated and delivered 11 prostheses. Three of them were hip disarticulations. We delivered five above the knee prostheses and three below the knee prostheses. Three particular patients come to mind when I think of our experience in Guatemala. Pedro was a 28-year-old man who lost his left arm and right leg in a horrific train accident. Pedro was quite emotional when we finally delivered his prosthesis. He stated that in the city he would not even be able to afford a prosthesis and would be relegated to crutches for the rest of his life. Jose had lost his left leg due to some gang-related activity involving a grenade. Jose had had a prosthesis before, but he said it was too heavy to use. With only minor adjustments, Jose was walking without any assistance.
Pedro and Jose will now be returning to Guatemala City to continue the ministry outreach that they have to gang members in the prisons. Evelyn was the one that was the star of this show and this particular clinic. Evelyn has a fairly rare congenital defect called proximal femoral focal deficiency, which resulted in a thumb-like appendage at the end of her leg. The last time we were there in January, we were not able to do anything for Evelyn because we did not have any pediatric componentry. Before we came back, she had that appendage removed by a local orthopedic surgeon. Jim Glover, who we borrowed from Beacon Prosthetics and Orthotics in Raleigh, North Carolina, did an excellent job creating this technical marvel of a prosthesis. My favorite memory with Evelyn is when she asked to whisper in my ear. At that time she asked if she could wear her prosthesis to bed and then she proceeded to thank me and gave us a gift of a bag of corn for the prosthesis. Watching Evelyn walk down the hall under her own power and her own will with her prosthesis was definitely the highlight of being at Hospital Shalom. <laughs>